We all need a laugh sometimes. Yep. Now more um, than ever. What's it talking about, Mike? It is the top of the hour. Yep. Hello, everybody. It's the top of the hour. I don't even have to lean into the mic. I barely even have to raise my voice. Um, do you want to talk? Do you want me to talk? Um, There's the clicker right there. OK. Firstly, thanks all for being here. Um, as per normal, the note will, if you are new here, please read it. And if you're not so new here, please follow it. Um, yeah, it's just about, you know, behaving yourselves. I think we can all do that. Um, and then we, you know, obviously have the note really well. I would strongly suggest reading this one as well. And um, yeah, then we have peace and calm, which is all good. Um, the meeting's obviously being recorded. If you haven't signed into Meet Echo, please do so so that you can get in the queue, etc. cetera, um, because we do use that queuing system. So, yeah. Um, our agenda, we're going to do a bit of an agenda bash in case anybody wants to add anything to the agenda. Um, we'll be giving brief updates from the area directors. Um, and then we'll be getting an update from our routing area director chairs. Um, and then we want to talk about the working group agenda items on the agendas and have a bit of a discussion about that. And following that, um, Sue will be giving us a presentation. Um, so Adrian, you are in the queue. Thank you, Adrian Farrell. Uh, this is just like a, a meta agenda bash. Um, I know the IETF meeting scheduling is really hard. Um, area meetings are a brilliant way of finding out what's going on across a whole area without going everywhere. And you're conflicted with the security area open meeting at the moment, to which there's no way I would have gone in hell. But, um, <laughs> uh, but I'm sure that there are some people, I can see Donald here, who, who might have considered that. And uh, even the ADs might have considered that as a good shopping uh, expedition. So next time. Yeah, good you. input, thank you. That's very good input. Um, anybody else um, want to add anything to the agenda or is the agenda sufficiently bashed? Okay, I think that the agenda is sufficiently bashed. So we're going to be giving some brief updates from the area directors. No real slides there. Um, yeah. This, yeah um, so John, would you like to go first with any updates from your side? Yeah. So um, main thing from me is I would like to welcome. Um, well, actually, I was going to say our newest uh, routing area chair, but she's already a routing area chair. But Yingjin Ku is going to be um, the third co-chair of LSR. Um, thank you very much. And go ahead, stand up. Everyone knows who she is, but there she is. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, we've been looking for a, a new chair for a while and Ying Jen stepped forward and we really appreciate it. Um, if you want to say anything, go ahead. Uh, I'm very happy and honored for the opportunity to serve the community and thank you all for the support. And Thanks. hopefully people active in RSR are already know who I am. So. <laughs> yep. Jim, you're up next. I, I lost. Yep. Um, I actually don't have anything specific. Um, my working groups have worked very well this week, which I'm most appreciative of. And we're making progress on lots of things. So, um, but as always, I'm open. Um, if anybody has any issues, to please come see me. Um, and from my side, um, I also want to thank my working groups this week. Everything has been going splendidly. Um, I also wanted to say Adrian Farrell has agreed to take interim chair for MPLS. Thank you very, very much, Adrian. Um, and I look forward to all the good work you're going to do for the short time you've given me as interim chair. Um, I may try and convince you afterwards to lengthen this, but I don't know if I'll succeed. Um, <laughs> but 
But thank you, thank you very much. And if you want to say a few words, you are more than welcome to. Otherwise, at least stand up and anybody new who doesn't know who Adrian is. Um. <laughs> You'll get to know him. Um, yeah, and that's it from my side. John, you wanted to add? Yeah, um, actually, I thought of two things to add. One is that um, Andrew's comment just now reminded me of the uh, story of the, the person who said, I'd like to say a word and stood up and said, plethora. And the chair said, thank you. That means a lot. <laughs> but, but that was just ad lib. Um, no, the other thing, the thing I really wanted to say was um, we, we, we keep changing the format of this meeting. Um, you know, we've, we feel that Usually we should have an area meeting to, you know, bring together frequent contributors and so we can talk about area business. Um, sometimes we've had uh, working groups report out, um, you know, sort of quite a bit earlier. Um, when I started coming to these meetings, there was always every single working group would go down the, the line and, and report out what their items were. And it, it tended to be kind of a just a version of them quickly reading through their document list um, and then sitting down again. Um, then we shifted to a format where we would ask a few working groups to report out in detail. And I thought that was, um, that was more satisfying to me anyway. Um, and, um, you know, we talked among ourselves, uh, while we were organizing for this meeting and said, do we need to do that? And decided, no, it, it doesn't, you know, it seems like we've done that exercise within the last few years and we don't need to, to be doing it every time we should do it, you know, when we charter a new group or have like a large new work item or something like that, that we need to, um, we need to raise the visibility of, but uh, this is all a, a long winded way of saying that if you have suggestions um, for how we can, you know, make your area meeting work better for you, um, please, uh, you know, you can use the mic during, you know, now during the open mic time or speak with any of us afterward. Um, that's it. Shall we go ahead then? Yes. Um, first next on, on the agenda is. Um, we are now going to get a bit of a report on the routing area directorate. Um, Daniel, do you want us to hand you control or should we drive from the side? Uh, if you could drive, that'll be good, please. Okay, that's perfect. Um, oh, and I, I forgot to mention this. Daniel is our new um, secretary for. The Routing Area Directorate, thank you very much for your willingness to help out and join us in this. And to Thanks. Andre for Yes, his and service. for luck, Andre, for all the work that he did. For many um, years up until now. Yeah. yeah. So take it so away. So take it away. Great. Hi, everyone. My name is Daniel Enriquez. Uh, next slide, please. Um, yes, uh, Right, so just a, a brief recap um, as part of the routing directorate, um, essentially is two functions that are being served. The first is for reviewers to review all documents submitted to the IS, uh, IESG for publication that have a routing significance and to assist ADs with judgment issues um, when requested. Now, as part of the routing directorate, there are currently 43 routing experts that have been appointed by the ADs. And the types of documents that they will review include um, routing drafts as they pass through ITF last call, um, reviews of other routing related drafts at ITF last call, and earlier review of any routing area working group uh, documents uh, before last call. In terms of personnel changes, as uh, Jim and Andrew have uh, alluded to, Luke has been uh, is stepping down. So thank you, Luke, for your, your great work and, and great handover. And I'll be taking over as a co-chair. On this slide, I just wanted to include a link to the routing directorate uh, wiki page. This includes um, a list of all of the documents that are currently under review, um, as well as the charter, which is quite important. In the next week, we're going to be cleaning up the, the wiki page um, because it is a little bit, bit behind and also reflects some of the changes that I'm, I'm going to be mentioning in the next slide. Next slide, please. Right, so since ITF 117, we've assigned 13 uh, documents for review, six have been completed, and the average completion time has been 14 and a half days.
currently we have 14 documents that have been assigned and are under review. Next slide, please. As chairs, we, we really focus on allocating documents to reviewers and we try to do this in the most timely manner possible. So going forward to try to improve the process, one of the things we're going to be aiming for is to try get and accept or reject from each reviewer as soon as possible. So after assignment, we'd really appreciate if reviewers could either accept if they're willing to do the review or reject it if they, they simply don't have the time or they, they feel their expertise isn't suited to a particular document. Um, as chairs, you're also going to be hearing a lot more from us. So we're going to be following up in terms of can you accept or reject a document? Um, we see the, the deadlines approaching. Do you feel you're going to be able to meet that deadline or not? Do we need to adjust it, etc.? Next slide, please. One slight change in terms of reviewer assignment. So one of the issues that, that I've noted is we run through a scenario where documents are signed to a reviewer for review. The reviewer doesn't acknowledge that assignment for a prolonged period of time and then either rejects it or we simply cannot get hold of that reviewer. So going forward, what we're going to be doing is each time we assign the document for review, it will be accompanied by a mail by either myself or the co-chair to inform you that this document has been assigned to you to do either accept or reject it. Secondly, each reviewer will be given seven days to either accept or reject an assignment. If we don't hear from a reviewer for seven days, we'll presume they can't um, review the document at present and we'll reassign it. And just to remind at the bottom there, you can see in Data Tracker, there's an accept or reject button. That's essentially what we're asking you to do. And that's it from me. Okay, if you don't mind, I'll add a comment, which is um, it's much better if you're not going to be able to accept the assignment to just reject it right away. There's, you know, no moral failing if you reject it, not a problem. Uh, we all have bursty schedules and don't always have time to do the review. So if you uh, reject early, it lets um, the chairs move on to uh, the next person in the queue, and it's much better that way. Thanks a lot for the presentation. Yep. Thanks. Anyone got any questions um, for Daniel? Okay, another one in the queue. So. Okay, the, the next item, we're actually hoping to get quite a bit of discussion on this. Um, it's something that we've noted recently in some of the working groups where we've got agenda items appearing on the agendas where there has been absolutely no discussion of the document on the agenda. Um, in one particular case, a document appeared on an agenda that literally did not exist. It hadn't been uploaded yet. Um, and so we want to talk a little bit about this. Um, as I said, there's, there's been a notable increase in documents on agendas that have no discussion on the working group lists. And the, the working group time in person is, is limited and we need to use it in the most efficient way to help move work forward. Um, so we have a bit of a proposal that we'd like some discussion on. And we're basically saying that drafts should only end up on working group agendas that have had discussion on the mailing lists prior to the working group uh, agenda item cutoffs. So effectively, we want to see some discussion on the mailing lists of the documents before they consume floor time. Then in addition to this, if working groups want to bring in external presentations for people, we've seen this a couple of times where they've seen something that they've thought is worth the working group hearing, etc. We'd like to have those slide decks sent to the working group in advance for some discussion so that people can take that and absorb it and have a meaningful discussion um, on the floor. We could have done this. Oh, yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Um, um, go for it. I was just going to add the comment that um, 
if anybody would like to point out that we failed to do that with um, the invited presentation at the end of this uh, meeting slot, you know, Mia Maxima Culpa. <laughs> um, we could have also done this kind of on an ad hoc basis for certain working groups within the area, but um, we discussed it among ourselves and thought that it would be far better to have kind of a harmonious policy that covered all the working groups within the area, hence us bringing it here for discussion. And we'd like to hear some discussion. Um, and if people have got questions and comments, we really feel that your input is always welcome. Um, and I see some people in the queue. So this is... So yeah, I want to make just one, one comment as well. <clears throat> What, what, the, the, one of the things that we discussed as ADs is that, um, you know, what we're trying to achieve here is that it, it would be really nice um, in a working group session if more than just the author of the document knew what on earth we were talking about. Um, so I've seen that many times where these documents come up, especially the zero zero versions where nobody's actually read the document and it's very hard to have any kind of discussion or or even comments on the document in, in the face-to-face uh, -face time. So that's what we're trying to avoid, um, just to give you some background. Uh, Anthony is first. Uh, Anthony uh, Liquid, um, this seems like common sense, and it seems a little bit surprising that we don't have this policy in place. And I guess my question is, should we not also consider all the areas, not just routing? <laughs> well, we're the routing area directors, so um, we didn't want to stray too far from <laughs> our patch. But it's a perfectly good point. Yeah. So I'm Jeff Haas. This is policy. So this is a, you know, think about the exception cases rather than make a recommendation. There are drafts that go through groups such as IDR. You know, that are largely, hey, we want to encode this thingy from some other working group in your protocol. I think I'm, you know, segment routing stuff is an example for especially BGPLS. Most of these things are, we're presenting this thing, it's a trivial encoding. Hey, who in IDR actually is following this work in SR or Spring? So think about how that should manifest here. So, okay, thank you for, don't get up yet, Adrian, because I'd actually like to have a conversation instead of just a series of short speeches. Um, <laughs> or maybe you were getting up to answer, Jeff, I don't know. Um, but what I wanted to, to, to respond with is, um, see, now I've been bantering and I've forgotten my point. Um, no, is, is um, yeah, I think that's, I, I think the meta point is that I at least don't think we want to, you know, make this such a stern policy that nobody, that there's no wiggle room for chairs to exercise their discretion and make exceptions. That would be silly. Then we should have shell scripts and not chairs. Um, but but I, I think that even in the case that you just raised, that sounds like something that's foreseeable that like when you're constructing, you know, your, your agenda, you should be able to say, oh yeah, I mean, mostly. Like sometimes you have a diving catch, right? It's Tuesday, you're at X working group and you say, oh, that really should have been presented in my working group, you know, and then you'll just like right in the moment say, please come and present, you know, two slides to make sure we're aware of your encoding. Um, that's fine. But I think the ask is still, even if it's like a liaison over from another working group, great, flag it to your mailing list. Right. I think one of the things that makes that a challenge, I'm not picking out any specific draft here, when things are being flagged, a part of it is sometimes, you know, since we're not aware of you know, the items, we don't know that the item in question is not actually work that's happening in the other working group. It's like, we're, we're being asked to stick metric foo inside of the segment routing TLV here. And, you know, it's like somebody that finally pays attention out of that working group says, what are you doing? We're not doing this stuff. This doesn't belong here. <laughs> so this is obviously a cheers, you know, uh, coordination problem, but it's being raised partially because it overlapped this point. Okay. Uh, I'd like to discuss this with you, you know, more later, but we don't have to use floor time for it. Adrian. Yeah, thanks, Adrian Farrell. Um, 
uh, basically plus one to what Jeff said, uh, and you know, should not must. So, um, and maybe on a mailing list rather than on the mailing list covers. Yeah, it covers a lot of it. Although, like I said, um, I'd still like to see it at least flagged to the mailing list of the working group in question. Yeah. And, and possibly what underlies this is in constructing the working group agenda, work out what it is that needs to be talked about and why and how, and, and then all of this goes away. Right. I mean, th this is always the tension in this kind of discussion, isn't it? It's, you know, on one end of the spectrum is like, okay, chairs try to be good chairs. As long as you do that, we don't have to have any rules at all. Um, on the other hand, having chaired a number of things, that wasn't very helpful to me. Um, and sometimes it's helpful to have uh, some, you know, if not rules, then very firm guidelines to help me do my job. And that's what we're attempting to do here. And the reason we're having this con as a conversation and not just an email is um, in case we've gotten it wrong in some way that we didn't notice. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Tony Lee is up. Thank you. Uh, Tony Lee, TBR co-chair. Um, I've got a somewhat reverse problem. Um, folks in my working group tend not to do much on the mailing list, and they seem to be much happier commenting in person, which only happens when we are giving a presentation. So this seems like a chicken and egg problem. Uh, how do I get around this? I, I, I don't know, chair harder? No, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm not serious. Um, yeah, it's, it, it is a problem. Different communities have different, you know, ways of working. And if your community's way of working is really to do everything in person, um, then it you're, it you're the chair, use your discretion, make your working group productive, uh, kind of what Adrian said. Um, all of these are guidelines and not hard and fast rules, but I mean, yeah, mailing lists suck. They're just, we haven't come up with anything better. Yeah. I, I mean, I just think just to add to what John said there, as, as we've said, I think repeatedly, these are, these are guidelines. Um, and they're simply guidelines to, to try and get that additional discussion, because as I said, we have seen a lot of times where documents are coming that nobody's read and it it does eat a lot of floor time and then you get agenda items that fall off that could have actually you know used real agenda time so that's simply the goal but yeah discretion as the chair uh roland yeah roland bless kit um i i fully understand the the idea behind that uh, I was asking myself whether it is probably a difference to make between the RTG, WG, like, I mean, that should be open for new work. And I try to bring new work to the ITF and that could become harder in case, oh, you can't present that because there was no discussion on the mailing list. So I think sometimes you should at least have some slots available for even if it's only five minutes to pe make people aware that that works much better in in meetings than just writing an email to their mailing list. Okay, here's a cool new stuff. No one reads it. And, and even though I presented it one year ago, so there are still people not understanding it. And so raising interest is not that easy. And I, I would actually, yeah, so... I'm in favor of prioritizing the real work that the working group has to do. And so I fully understand if charter items have priority, but don't exclude the possibility for new work. Um, Roland, what I will say is just a, a comment on that. And I, I fully see the point, 100%. I think that by ensuring that where we've got drafts um, that are getting discussion versus drafts that simply aren't and adjusting the agenda item accordingly. I also think we'll end up making more space in that limited working group time for items like 
what you've raised here. Because at the moment, if the agenda is getting really full and you're getting certain items on there that are not getting any discussion, you end up eating up all that time and then those opportunities are reduced. So I think it's something that we do need to think about and I'll certainly chat with my fellow ADs and, you know, as we write the guidelines, um, we'll be cognizant of that. Okay. Hi, Lou Berger. I'm really happy I'm following Roland because that was my second point is, is that uh, we really want to not exclude new people and new thoughts and new ideas. And I'm a little worried about the second, how the phrase, your phrasing of the second bullet. And I would say, if you could modify that to, uh, instead of external presentations, say new drafts or new drafts and external presentations. Yes, and I, think I think they're two separate points. I think that the external presentations are, we've, we've got some items where, for example, in one of the working groups, they saw someone had done something cool with Tavino and they wanted to bring that in to share it. That would be external. So new drafts and external, I think they, yeah, if the wording there was addressing the one case, it probably needs to address both cases. Uh, that That's uh, separate is, is probably better. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't, I'm not in a lot of working groups that have time for that type of external information. Hmm. Uh, but worrying about new drafts, new ideas, and in particular new contributors and allowing for them and giving them space, I think is, is like super critical. In fact, you know, we all know new people are the hardest thing to bring in. Yes. And okay. So yeah. I, I'd like to say that, um, you know, sort of the, the spirit behind this, and we may have got it wrong is I think about really two things. One is, um, you know, with, with zero zeros, especially, and, and this is more like, you know, not, not the brand new idea that needs to be socialized. It's just, you know, don't, don't submarine your idea until the last day and then, you know, pop it out, you know, right as the cutoff hits and then expect to get useful work done. It's, it's not a good way of, of working. And, and, you know, everybody's deadline driven. And this is basically a way of saying, let us help you be deadline driven in a way that's more productive for everyone. And then as usual, I forgot my second point. But I, I gotta tell you, I, I actually love the suggestion or the, make it a rule that zero zero or new material that's not been discussed needs to be submitted a week in advance. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, a week before Monday, you know, you know uh, and give for there's so time, there's time for adequate review before the meeting. I think that's a fantastic idea. I really like that one. And I, I think we'll, I think we'll have a follow-up discussion on, you know, we'll, we'll schedule a, a working group chairs chat. And after we've had a chance to iterate on this and, you know, then have a follow-up, but it seemed like, I mean, this is not just a working group chairs meeting, this is an area meeting and it, potentially touches anybody who contributes to the area, which is why we wanted to first float it here. Yeah, I'm sold on, on that one. Um, the one added point I'd like to bring up is something, I think it was either, I think it was Chris Hopps, not AC, but he was co-chairing, who said they're going, they were thinking about running an experiment where they would stop the time early to leave a few minutes for discussion. So I ran with their idea and have it run now three sessions with that approach. And I really like it. I think it's really helpful. So steal a little bit of time so that the timer expires, but then you have a few minutes left over for discussion. And it was not my idea, but I, I've run with it and it seems to be working really well. That's good yeah. practice. <clears throat> and, and Lou, Lou, I just want to, uh, just, just a comment from my perspective on the zero, zero drafts. I, I, I guess one, one of the things we're trying to say is that um, with a zero zero draft, the first time that the working groups heard of it shouldn't really be as a presentation in, in the working group meeting. I mean, just an announcement on the mailing list that, hey, I've got this really new cool idea and here's the document, here's a pointer, is to some degree discussion um, before the meeting, right? So, because um, otherwise it's just I come along, I present this new idea, nobody's really got time to think about it. Um, we could have done that earlier, and that's kind of what we're trying to achieve, that um, that allows us to at least have a little bit more input in the working group session itself, if that makes sense. It, it does, and we, we've done that sometimes. I, I can't say we're perfect and do it all the time. It's probably in, uh, 
the minority that we've done that. Uh, but it, it's a, we've seen it always met with dead air. So I really like the idea, and I have not had that one before or done that one, but uh, the idea of saying, send your presentation a week before. And yeah. I, you know, it, it's a chance. It, 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 there's still a barrier to entry to opening a document and reading it, slides or less. So I think it's a great idea. Yeah. <clears throat> Sue. Does this policy uh, restrict interims? Sometimes what we've done is we've had a new drafts interim. It's announced as, hi, we're going to give new drafts a chance to get online. People know it's there. You're not in person. You're picking up chance for people to try out their thing. Do you want new drafts? announced on the list a, minute, a week before we do that. We usually have our agenda set up that, but how firm do you want to be on that one? Um, Sue, thank you very much. I don't think that's something that we actually considered. We and <laughs> this is this is really why we, we like a conversation yeah. like this, because it brings things to our attention. Um, I think we'll, we'll talk about that amongst ourselves. Um, obviously, I think that even going into an interim, if there is some notification of something so that people actually come and, you know, can look through and go, well, I've seen this, I want to go and discuss it. From my perspective, is is helpful to actually encouraging people to come to the interims. But I think we'll have a bit of a discussion on that um, and then revert back to you on it. But thank you. That's a really good point. Is, is it AC? I think I'm next. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So AC Lindum Lab, and there's a couple things I'm going to say. We we used to have a separate deadline for zero zero drafts. Remember where it was before the, the, the absolute deadline. So maybe we, and the other change that I might like to see, I would like to see, of course, my list doesn't get that much traffic would be for not just the working group documents, but any document for LSR to go to the list. That, I think that would be useful, you know, if somebody s submits one that has a, you know, you know, if the right, you, you know, that it just goes to the list and it kicks everybody's, you know, brain in. But I, I'm unclear about what you're saying. Are, are I'm you saying, saying when that, like, somebody published, to, some, yes, to yeah, on, on the string LSR, LSR hyphen, yeah, well, I, label switch router, I guess, but. Uh, how how about you? You can come up with a regex that matches on somebody's you know somebody's name hyphen LSR hyphen you know and 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 if if the person has named the draft right, it's it's going to go to the list. Right now, if it's a working group document and somebody republishes it, it goes to the list automatically. Right. But I mean, you... but I period I periodically look at them. But if it's something I I'm not that excited about, I kind of let. A sleeping dog lie. I look at it and I say, "Hmm, you know, are they going to ask for to present this?" But invariably, d me doing that, it they do anyway, you know. But but delay anyway. And we have a lot of people that are passionate about working on drafts, but it's yeah. usually their draft. <laughs> <laughs> what we need is more people that are passionate about reviewing. And 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 in all fairness, we have some really good reviewers, right. but. Uh, it would be good to get more discussion. It's always the same people that are reviewing it. So, so and I, I, I will point out that Data Tracker does have a feature where you can set like a, a watch list and you can like give it regexes that you want to show up on your dashboard. Oh. But um, for the 90% of the people in the room that don't constantly use Data Tracker as a dashboard, that doesn't help as much as the other thing. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if you can get it to also like kick off email to you because that would be sort of a an interim step the, the only thing i'm concerned about with your suggestion is it is a heuristic so you might end up with getting label switched routers landing yes, on the yes, lsr exactly. mailing list exactly. but it may, may, maybe you know and for all i know there already is a data tracker feature now that lets you you know get those emails sent to you but it, it's sort of in general a, a good idea and we should like look into the tooling and see what's yeah. possible when it, when it gets close to the ietf i always start looking to see what people are submitting but i don't even like if it's not if it's more than a month away i don't even expect new drafts to come yeah i think we will we'll definitely have a discussion and talk to the tooling um i don't know if there's anybody here involved in tooling who would like to make a comment but otherwise we will chat to them and come back um yeah uh, 
Um, so for RTCWZ, we do get a lot of low zero zero draft because RTCWZ also Jump sort of serves as the dispatch function team uh, working group for the whole routing area. And for us, we do try to prioritize. We actually try to prioritize all the working group document update first. And then so something discussed second. And then if it's like a brand new and we put them like if time allows. And for those, um, a new author of a zero zero draft, even in the email you say, please communicate your idea on the list it might be challenging for them. So um, I guess as chairs, we will try to do a better work to help them, you know, how help them to say, oh, how can you communicate this thing on the list? They may not even have a clue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I suggest you know, we don't have, make this a hard requirement. It's probably more a recommendation. At least for us, that's probably, <laughs> That's yeah, I, I think it's a very firm recommendation, though, and, and maybe we need to have a longer discussion with you offline if you think that, like, it seems to me that that really almost any author should at least be able to send an email to the mailing list that says, you know, dear routing area working group, yeah. we have published this zero zero draft, please that, take a look. That I share, I guess we can make sure that will happen in the future. Um, Lars. Lars, like a data tracker power user, uh, jumping the queue. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Um, if you use that feature in the data tracker, there is a button on the bottom that says, send me email when any of these drafts see new revisions, and then you get an email. And you can even pick which email address it goes to. Cool. Thank, Thank you, you Lars. So that's a revision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, but it, that, that has been done cares. forever. Um, Tony P. So I had a beer and missed a lively meeting. What a change. Um, so the first thing is, um, I look for a polite term, harebrained. Uh, uh, I can't force a discussion, right? And very often I have an update on the draft where people just crank out a new version. It's very interesting to see what they were cooking. Um, so I can't force it. Interesting idea, but I don't think, you know, it's neither here nor there. Uh, second, yeah, I'm all for it, right? We should get the time frame. It should get, you know, the material and not present without a draft as a policy, absolutely. Um, if you want more participation people on the drafts, lively participation, make the blooding authors list longer. Okay, this is now a, such a big forum. This is not like five people cranking out stuff. This is becoming big exercises. Make it a page long, like any reasonable standard, okay? That's the simplest thing to get more people getting exciting work on it rather than ending up with some you know, obscure that, That's very interesting. Um, and I'd be interested in like offline feedback or whatever about whether other people think that like just taking any back pressure away from author list length will actually get us uh, that's um, more maybe overly generous. Okay? Well, that basically but making the said, second yeah. page, you know, of the draft. I mean, look at like big ITU standards. Look at like old ATM oh, standards. Oh, oh, right. No, but those those are heavy four hundred pages stuff that was running the world in the serious world, right? Those are those are page long of contributors. Look at today's modern science papers, right? Teams of pages of people. This complex stuff. There's a lot of people. People want recognition, and we have this you no know, this this elbowing thing. Cost us nothing. I, I, I will say, Tony, I, I also find that, that feedback very interesting. And I would say to everybody in here, if you've got more feedback like that, um, I'd certainly be interested to hear about it. I'm sure the rest of the IESG would be quite interested to hear this too. Um, and I would encourage um, you, know, you guys to let us know if that is how you feel. Um, uh, you can go the opposite way and say one author per company. I think you should just open it and make it a page. Okay. Yeah. We, we don't participate as companies. Let me remind uh, you. Yeah, it leads to another discussion, right? <laughs> that we have already. Okay. Well, I was like, I really didn't think I would go twice to the microphone uh, in this group. <laughs> so so we, we've had situations in the past, and I forgot which area it is, where the front page of a draft was basically used to indicate corporate support 
and 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 it was more many more than five on a document that had many fewer than five pages um <laughs> and and the, the reason was simply that to to show that right and and that is sort of a problem that we would re-enter maybe if we open it all up but it, it is a continuous discussion and and we so should have can it. i can i ask yeah. um on that draft with the you know more than 20 people on the front page was there like a tremendous amount of engagement on the mailing list and in the working group um, in discussing it? It wasn't in my area. I only saw it when it hit the okay. ISG, sorry. Yeah, and I, I, I also just want to kind of add to what Laws has seen. One of the things that I, I have seen is people putting 20 authors on the page and in one particular case, asking one of those people to come and present the draft that he was on the front page of. And within about three minutes of the presentation, you realized that the guy who was presenting hadn't read the draft himself. And it was being used clearly as a build up support to show that there is support for the draft. So there is a tension here. And I think that it is something that we are constantly discussing. There is a lot of discussion about it. Um, and we welcome feedback. and. You know, we've got to see if we can strike the balance somehow. Yeah, so it can go both ways. Sorry that I'm jumping in, but it's, I mean, it's a very relevant discussion for the future of this whole thing exercise. It can completely take any value from the autos list padding that we have now, right? Which is used as a tool and we all know it's being played, right? So all of a sudden, like, yeah, well, everybody can have a page, whoever cares, right? There's a page of authors. <laughs> it may go the other way that it becomes even more competitive, right? Look, I have a really a page full. But then what we need to do is to put uh, objective standards, who is an author? And we have to put those drafts on the Git and have a Git history, which of course can be gamed again. Every game can be played. You know, we just have to make the game harder and more objective and make aware that if we catch people, there are consequences, right? Uh, uh, no perfect solution, but what we have now sucks. Thank you, Tony. I think I sneak it's... One, sneak one in. I, 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 a lot of times, I mean, it depends on the draft. In, in, the, in the matter of consensus building and combining drafts, the five offer list doesn't make any sense because you have gone through a lot just to get the two drafts merged, to all of a sudden push everybody off after that big effort, I'd rather fight with the IESG on the number of offers than open it back up, the consensus that took a long time to gain. Yeah, um, just, just one comment on, on that. When I've looked at what the, the current recommendations draft says, there is you know, in, in the case of there being more than five authors, which is what the current document says, there are two options. You can appoint editors or you can potentially get an override to have more authors on the document. But if you go beyond the five author limit, then there needs to be a justification. And I think that the justification of mergers on documents is a perfectly suitable justification. Where it becomes a problem is when the justification in the shepherd's write-up or from the chairs, etc., comes back and says, well, because the authors wanted it that way. That does not qualify as a justification. So that's a quote. Yes, that is an actual quote out of a out of a document that had a number of authors. Um, and so Yes, there are obviously cases where there need to be more than five in the cases of mergers, and I don't think anybody is denying that. But I think that there has to be some kind of, you know, limit on have you actually given a proper justification for that? Um, and it's not a case of, well, because we want it. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to phrase this weirdly in reverse. Please bear with me. Uh, if by allowing or making it easier to be on an author list of um, a draft slash something we come in RFC has this, well, if, if, if that is a effect of, of changing this, just making it easier to become an author, um, there is a effect of this that I would very much like to see, which is it will work against the practice of people getting 
bonuses for getting their name of an RFC on an RFC, which I think is a very counterproductive practice. And if it's easier to get your name on a document, that will hopefully make this practice less likely to keep it working. I know this is very tangential to this, but I wanted to bring it up anyway. Right. I think you just said if we uh, allow everybody to print their own money, then we'll have rampant inflation. Yes. <laughs> Lars, welcome Again, back for yeah, the third time. I should, I should come to this meeting more often. This is really actually not as bad as I thought. Uh, <laughs> um, what, right. I, what, I meant, so what I meant to say, though, is I mean, the, the word author sort of implied that it's a person that's writing words. Right? It, author doesn't mean you're on the front page. It means you have written text and, and oftentimes significant text for the document. So... We have cases where many more people than five have written significant pieces of text for a document, and that would be exactly the argument to make, uh, right? Why this particular document needs that expansion. But, you know, we, we have that limit for a reason, and, and, and we, we need to entertain carefully whether we want to lift it. We, we've, you know, we've seen internet drafts where the first page on the old ASCII rendering was just names and affiliations. Yep. Tony. And nothing wrong with that, but I'll give you an example of a procedure that, that, you know, how I seen the standard done. It was working pretty well. So you didn't just ref out the drafts. I know this is very lively, but, you know, let's, let's talk what really matters, where we're seeing what the friction is, right? Um, and you just didn't just ref zero one and, and shown it, right? What you were doing, you were running a document. You had a set of documents, zero working group documents. And people had actually present the diffs that they wanted on the next revision. So you knew the guy actually did work and what work he was presenting. And then you took a vote. It was more formal, right? Like that this thing goes into the document. And that was pretty clear who was working on the document, how much they contributed. I mean, that didn't matter at the end because the author's list was just sorted, right? You don't want like this guy comes up and whatever. Maybe the editor was acknowledged. So, so is your point that, that in principle, at least, we could have, you know, traceable, trackable, who sent text. Yeah, right, right. And of course, people can present on top of, uh, uh, no, like again, every process can be gamed, but it's much more tractable, right? So it's, those are doable things to, to find out who is actually contributing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're, don't have a queue anymore. Yeah. And going once, going twice. Yeah, so, so I think that we've, um, Wow, this is a great conversation. Thank you, everybody. Um, we're obviously going to have to go back and digest the notes and, you know, see if we can come up with something coherent out of it and iterate. But, um, but this, was, uh, this was a great start. Thank you. Um, so the, the next thing is going to be, you know, don't get up yet, and going to be a, and now for something completely different where Sue Harris is going to talk to us. Um, but before we we move on to Sue, I'd just like to you know put out one more like is there is there any other business anything anyone that wants to discuss? Otherwise, we'll move on to to Sue's talk. Okay, um, cool. So um, yeah, this is definitely a, a case of now for something completely different. Um, and when we you know put out a, a request for you know people interested in in talking to us. Who came up with this, and it seemed uh, it seemed interesting. So and I could send it a week ahead to John. <laughs> we and and if we had thought and about our our thing, we would have sent it to everybody, but we didn't. Um, <laughs> actually, uh, I I really appreciate John. I'll need the click. Oh, of course. Uh, okay, so I actually asked the ads to carefully look at this uh, because this could be a sensitive topic. My point is. Um, this, it, there's a picture of Lars, I thought it was, you know, but it is based on a dissertation that looks at the ISG and the uh, part of the ISG is the ITF chair. It doesn't look at Lars, it doesn't look at Alyssa, it goes back to Yari, so hopefully it, so why am I doing this? My goal is simply to give you my PhDs in the area of leadership, which is a business degree. Okay, it's standards organization, and this is my dissertation, but some of this is just my comments as a chair who's been chairing a long while. So my goal is simply to help you work better and to try to make the internet work better. Don't think that I don't like our ADs. I like the ADs, okay? So it's really just an aid. 
Okay, so the measures of an AD, there's some don'ts. Don't use the RFC publication as a measure, and I'm going to prove to you that why uh, that's false given the statistics we have. Do judge your um, ADs as a working group senior manager leader. These guys are good. Um, do look at where your uh, AD spends his time weekly. Realize if you want your drafts reviewed, he has to spend time reviewing other people's. So that's the purpose. This is the mission. It's sort of uh, mom and apple pie. Read the slides if you have it. So what did I actually look at in the uh, information? I looked at the last thing. There is a whole bunch of research happening inside of the RASP um, research group to look at standards process. And they look at mail lists, and they look at reviewer choices. I urge you, if you can, to go ahead and uh, respond to the reviewer choices. They're trying to make better reviewers. But I look specific at what makes, what group dynamics, and I'm going to repeat that, what group dynamics makes an ISG effective, and that is something that people study. And so that's what I studied. Now, just to review, uh, if you're reviewing your AD on RFC responsibilities, he does have responsibilities, timely communication of, of uh, your frameworks, prompt scheduling of directorate reviews. Thank you for getting a new uh, set of directorate people. Prompt scheduling of ITF last calls, uh, prompt review. But to do that, he's got to go through all the process. So please know what's under their control and what's not. Talk to them. Okay, let's go to the RFC. The RFC uh, on the bottom is the year. Now I can go year by year and I will give you 2015, 2016, but it's offset. If nothing else, realize the ISGs go from March to March and the RFCs report on January to January. There's a little time gap there. You can't take them for responsibility when they weren't there. Okay. So let's look at 2015, 2016, where I counted every decision. I validated against the publication. I validated their working group actions against the ballots, and I validated or creation or non-creation. I went through everything. So if you look at RFCs, there were 400 in 2015, just as an example, there were 474 documents examined for a decision. They approved 313. That year, the RFC was 300 publications, but some of it's in the past. So what's their approval rate? About 66%. Okay, you can improve that by listening to your shepherds. What about their working group actions? Uh, they had... Uh, 111 working group decisions they needed to make. Now, notice that year they made 202. Uh, that's the year they redid the art area and they had a high rate because they'd been talking a lot about it. What about management items? What's a management item? Your RFC, IANA, if it goes to the ISG, if you're looking for early allocation, and they, approve about, they approved about 47%. So that's about 800... Uh, 820 decisions in about 26 meetings. They are cranking, okay? 58% docs, 14% working groups, 35% management. Now let's look at 206, 216. Again, 66% of the working groups were, uh, documents were approved. They looked at 449, they approved 295, but you had RFCs that are 310. Notice there's a difference. Again, they approved about 86% of the working groups. They've usually talked a lot about that and they approved about 44% of the management items. So notice there's a lot they're cranking through every week. So the RFC actions, notice they have a lot to do. They have to review the documents, they have to review. That's what they usually do on their work week that ends up being the ISG formal. You can see that. Okay, your leader is a manager. You all have seen the Dilbert, you know, pointy hair. 
but you can ask your AD, are you being a good manager or leader? It's a discussion. You don't get very far at work if you don't talk at your manager or leader. Please do. Um, a good manager and these guys try really hard to listen to working group chairs and participants. Know the working group drafts before they review. If you go ahead, you can let them review it by publishing it a week ahead. Further even helps, and it help, they help with challenges. I don't know how many working group chairs have had their AD knockdown challenges. I have. Um, and they prefer a clear and timely communication, and they lobby to get what the working group needs. Um, IDR says, thank you for our two sessions this, this time. We appreciate it. And inspiring leaders do about the same thing, but they think about the future. How many, you know, when you hold a boff, these guys spent a lot of time prepping that boff and they decide what needs to change. Now, this all may be mom and apple pie, in which case you're an old chair like me or some of the other folks here and you know that. But do ask if your air, how your AD is growing the area. Are they selecting high quality boffs? Feedback. Your version of a high quality boff may not be theirs or someone else's. And they, the reviewer I've said. Okay. These, by the way, are just a translation of things. Now, there are some really cool things about the ITF. This is a picture of all the emails graphically of all the email subgroups and RFCs. Notice it started with a few and it just sort of look out. Don't worry about reading it. it the, the important part of, you can look at it, it's online. The important thing is that it sort of grew organically. You know, we sort of have a, a model of compute store or compute video and store. And many times I wondered, does that match the physical net? So for this research, I looked at physical nets and I said, these are eye candy folks. If you're really interested, we can debate offline. I looked at how security got into networks, what sort of network stuff. And over the 30 years, these guys have done a pretty good job. Um, they also change areas. Notice we just had a new area created, but that's not the first or second. And sometimes the, um, the uh, formation of IP6 had the IPNG group. You had something from routing to think about when MPLS came. So talking about that stuff is good. You have to realize that these guys are are being called upon when things get tight to go the extra mile. And that's what makes a good ISG. But there are bad team players, you know, uh, blockers, attackers, jokers, people who withdraw. So this mix and the things they must conquer, like in 2015, they did the art area, which is now redone. And in 2016, Yari had to deal with the IANA transitions. These all affect ISGs. So the character of the group and the things they have to deal with uh, matter. Now, if you're ever interested, I can go through what I learned. This, this longitudinal is based on a 10% sample. I'm trying to validate my sample and then make it automatic in a set of tools, but you can talk to the RASP group on how I'm working. Again, the statistics on the bi-weekly load I just gave you, here's another small tidbit. Who decides? They are actually very effective. Um, usually about two-thirds of the ISG decides, but they give subgroups decisions to try to make more management. The other thing is discusses actually get resolved fairly effectively. If you look at it over time, discusses go off into this other loop thing where the two ADs who might be discussing or three are actually doing a ballot and discussing online, which means they don't have to come back and bring it to the main group, which is very effective because every moment, just like these guys have said that every moment in the ITF meeting matters, every moment they have in that bi-weekly meeting matters. So the fact you get the discusses. Help them. Um, I'm trying to hit John the time. Now, Lars, uh, my apology, uh, there is the Lars, uh, you know, leader. But 
there are things you have to realize that when an ITF chair is a good manager and leader, he's heading toward a direction. And there are two measures, not just one for an ITF chair. The results, which I just showed you, how, how many decisions in this biweekly session get made. And then does he accomplish the things that the non-com um, selected him for? For example, Yari was selected to refresh all the um, areas. How many people remember when we saw, when Aliyah and Adrian and other people went through all the area working group chairs and asked us if, we, if in the routing we were doing the right thing? That's something that goes beyond. And when you see those bubbles occur, realize your, your time is going to go slower. How am I doing on time? You're just fine. I'm cranking. So what's the result of that? The result, if they're doing something else, the ver you get a variance in the amount of statistics that come out weak. Ask. You know, they'll usually tell you what's, if they can, and it's not um, a personnel matter, which is uh, an appeal is a personnel matter, a uh, uh, conflict with a particular chair is a, a, they won't tell you that and don't expect them. They would, you know, that's a bad thing to do uh, because it's, if you were that person, you don't want it spread all over, okay? But they will have other things that are there like our, um Yari's IANA transition. He talked about it, but it does change how effective they are. So ask, talk, you know, learn. Don't just sort of uh, things. Now, uh, caveat, the quantity of quality data matters. I did, this took me seven, eight years and uh, millions of things because I kept getting one result and saying, you know, I look at that and I don't think for my computer scientists that works. So I have a lot of quantity of, of data uh, for 2015-2016. Um, I have 15 times uh, 1,600 times 40, about a million and a half data points. Okay, triangulation is critical. I triangulated every result. The ISG minutes doesn't do that for you. You have to sometimes dig it out. And here's the takeaway. Solidarity is better than organizational citizenship behavior. So what does that mean? That means because we have a good relationship with each other, we're willing to put in the extra miles when things get tough. When conflict happens, it's critical that we become friends enough to decide that's a worthy thing to do. It's true of the ISG. When I was at the RAST, they said, somebody who is from po a policy nerd, I'm, that's what I call the um, government people who come and ask what they can do to make us work better. I said, you can keep paying for their yearly retreat because you're going to see more output. It's true of us too. So with that, I'm still in the mountains of the data. If I get more, I'll share it with you and I'm going to work to give us details like this. Was this interesting? Yes, no, just tell me afterwards. Give me back my clicker. <laughs> um, Sue, I, I just, for a minute, I'll start off here and say thank you very much. I, I know for me, um, I found that really, really interesting. Um, I, I confess, as an AD, when you see a presentation like this coming, you are sitting here going, what am I facing? Um, but um, yeah, um, I, I, I like the the fact that you know the data is is really interesting. It also gives me as an AD a lot to think about, and I, I really really appreciate the presentation. And I'm probably contact you at some point to dig even deeper into some of it because some of it really was interesting. So thank you very much. Please ask me. Thank you for letting me share my interest. And if anybody else has got comments or questions, um, put yourself in the queue. Put yourself in the queue. Otherwise, we're done. And yeah, ba based on uh, things I'm seeing in various chats, we're not the only people who are interested. So anyway, 
Thank you very much. And we are concluded. Thanks everybody for being here. And thanks for the um, really awesome conversation. It was very helpful. Yep. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs>